Hello, my name is Mike Pastor. I'm a lifelong resident of, of Miami, and I've been asked to uh, do a presentation on Congressman Ed Pastor, who is my first cousin. They wanted me to express what his life was growing up in Miami, and I was going to give a little background on his political career also. Ed was the first uh, Hispanic congressman from the state of Arizona, and he, he was placed in office through a special election center, uh, when Congressman Mo Udall became ill and had to leave office. And Ed at the time was with the Maricopa Board of Supervisors, Phoenix, and decided to run for Representative Udall's seat, which consisted of the southern part of the state, Tucson, the southwest Arizona, and into the Phoenix area. And this was in 1991, fortunate enough to win that election and was re-elected to the seat uh, four times. 2000, as a result of the uh, census count in Arizona, his district became realigned and he was in District 2 originally, but with the population increasing in Arizona, he was assigned to District 7, which was more in central Phoenix area, where his home was. So. Ed decided instead of running in District 2, where he had been elected four times, he was going to not, rather than move to District 2, he stayed in District 7 and made a decision to run for the new District 7 position. And he won that election and was reelected uh, in District 7 six more times for uh, a total of term in Congress of 23 years. During those years, he was very instrumental in, uh, he served on the uh, House Appropriations Committee for 20 of the 26 years. He knew, knew the ins and outs of, of funding for many of the projects that came across the Appropriations Committee's desks. He was very instrumental in, in, in getting the uh, funding for light rail that currently is in, in Phoenix area and for a lot of the major renovation in Sky Harbor Airport. And one of the reasons he was so involved with that was because our senators at the time were not advocates of earmark, Senator Kyle and Senator McCain. Congressional delegation worked with Ed because he sat on appropriations committee. And we even had Matt Salmon, a Republican a congressman from Arizona, always said that, you know, if Arizona ever needed anything, go to Ed because he was the go-to guy in appropriations and we were fortunate in Arizona to have those major projects in, the, in uh, Maricopa County become developed and improve uh, the lifestyle in the valley. That's a political life of Ed, but really what I'm interested in providing to the, to the public is, is his personal life. Ed lived just a normal life like any, any of us who grew up here in Miami. Ed went to George Washington School, which was a very big, big school in this area, K through eight. He played Little League Baseball like most of the kids do, but the Little League Baseball is still alive, going in, in, in town. Senior class president, the class of 62. One of the interesting things about Ed is he grew up working a paper route. He worked for the, sold the Arizona Silver Belt for several years during his seventh and eighth grade years. And then when he got to high school, he was fortunate enough to get a paper route for the Republic. And when he graduated from high school, go to uh, Arizona State University. He, he was there for, he got his bachelor's degree in chemistry. He, he picked chemistry because he originally wanted to be a pharmacist. So when he gra got his degree in, in chemistry, got a job at North High School, chemistry teacher, and he taught there for a couple of years. This would be in 1968, 69. Immediately went to work for the first Hispanic governor in Arizona, uh, Raul Castro. And uh, like I said, that was that was approximately 74, 75. And he worked in the in, on the civil rights issues in, in Maricopa County for the governor. 1976, I had mentioned earlier, he was elected to the Maricopa County Board of Supervisors. Ed was married to Verma Mendez and he has has two daughters, Laura and Yvonne. Laura is, is actually a present day city councilwoman for the city of Phoenix. 
So, you know, the, the legacy has been carried on for many years to go. You know, Ed was always, always very receptive to coming back to Miami, supporting our community, be the key speaker for fundraisers and, and different activities in the community. He supported the library very much. Much There are several pieces of, of memorabilia here at the library, and if you should come up to visit, I'm sure you'll see what we have here from him during his terms in office. The Arizona Room was de get dedicated to him, and I believe one of his old desks are sitting here, one of his old office desks, which is pretty amazing because it's not as big as you would think it would be, but it is very simple. And, and you know, Ed was, was a pretty simple guy. He didn't forget. He never forgot where he came from. And when he came back, he always, always would recognize people that he knew. He used to say anytime he was here, he would always open up his presentations with, with a phrase that, was, uh, uh, that goes kind of like this, and I hope I can get it completely right. He says, there's two kinds of people in this world. He says, people who live in Miami and people who wish they lived in Miami. And with that, I would just like to uh, say thank you very much.